Oh no. You love the Muppets. Yes. And if you don't, I really have nothing if to you say don't... to you. <laughs> whatsoever. You gotta love the Muppets and everything they Come on. Exactly. Christina, you did an interesting post saying instead of me droning on about it, why don't you just talk about this story about the Muppets? Okay, it's it's awesome. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's awesome. So they are going to make something that they, it's, it's a playlist is, is uh, says they have the inside scoop on the, the, the next Muppet film, which is being called the greatest Muppet movie ever. And it sounds just like it's the greatest Muppet movie ever. Okay, first of all, the guy that's directing it is from Flight of the Concords. Yes. Okay, so that right there, I'm, I'm sold. I'm like, yeah, no, this sounds like the I'm best like, thing ever. I'm sold. But then it gets even better. Jason Siegel and the guy that directed Forgetting Sarah Marshall are writing the script. Now, if you saw Forgetting Sarah Marshall, you know that one of the highlights of the movie, which was a very funny movie, I might add, was this whole Dracula puppet musical at the end. And actually, and of course, the scene in the movie where he's alone. But with yes, his piano, just yes. playing the theme to the Muppet movie. Yes, yes. yes. And, and, and the Jim Henson Company actually made all of the puppets for that sequence. And, and, I didn't and, know that. Band. I want so to he, see that made into a musical. For yes, real. yes. No, I mean, it was. It, it was like, you know, Avenue it Q was or awesome. whatever. But, but it was great. And so taking people who clearly love puppets and clearly love that sort of thing and then fly to the concourse and then all the Muppet characters and all of, you know, the weird Muppet humor and... Oh my God! It's like the greatest Muppet movie ever. Which, <laughs> I mean, I'm 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 like psyched, and and I don't even have to like know anything else. You just have to say "Flight of the Concourse" and Jason Siegel, and I was like sold. I remember like a year ago when the news first came out that Jason Siegel actually approached uh, the Jim Henson Company with this idea that he wanted to do a Muppet mm -hmm. movie. I mean, this is he loves the Muppets oh, yeah, legitimately. Yeah. And we did this story about a year ago, and I remember thinking, okay, well, this probably isn't going to have legs. This probably isn't going to go anywhere. And then out of nowhere, boom, it's happening. And I think this is awesome news. Personally, I think this is great. I think this sounds like the greatest thing ever. I actually <laughs> love Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I love mm -hmm. that. May I was already a Jason Siegel fan from yes. Freaks and Geeks. Freaks and Geeks. So, yeah, I know, right? And then I was like, man, he can write. And I, and I loved the idea of the Dracula musical and I wanted to see it really made. And so, yeah, I, I'm exactly with you. If you put all of these things together, it's not just, it's like the greatest movie ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you've awesome. seen me, the YouTube things of, of the, the Bohemian Rhapsody of the Muppets yeah. and then oh, yeah. they had one yesterday with Beaker's Ballad yeah. where all the YouTube comments come in like, Completely clearly, on my Facebook. Yes, yes. So, like, clearly the people at Disney who own the rights to the Muppets now, and as well as the Jim Henson Company who still does the puppets, like, they clearly are in touch with what, like, today's Muppet fans, you know, young and old are into. So I think this is really, really cool. And, you know, yeah. I'm, in, I, kind I'm kind of into watching on-demand shows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I miss The Office or whatever, I can just go on to on-demand and watch it. The little commercials they've had on my on-demand for Time yes, Warner lately. Yes, yes, yes. That's been the little Muppet stuff, right? Yes, for, yes. For yes, community so service. Yeah, Disney thing. Yeah, and I cool. howl at these things every single time because Miss Piggy in these commercials is pretty much the physical and spirit representation of half the girls I've dated in my life. And so I, I get a big, but it's great seeing a Muppet resurgence. It is awesome seeing them come back as puppets and not CGI. I yes. think this is, this is terrific news. But listen, we got to move on. We still got a couple other things to cover here. Um, this is interesting and yet completely not surprising. Um, coming off, just finished filming uh, a new spy film for himself. Tom Cruise has this new film coming out called Day and Night, a spy comedy action film he's doing with... Um, uh, Cameron oh, Diaz. Thank you very much. Uh, former Mrs. Justin Timberlake. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's coming off that, and I guess he really wants to keep doing the spy things, and I guess he just keeps wanting hit films. Because it's been announced that he is back on board, they are going to be doing a Mission Impossible 4. He's going to be producing it with J.J. Abrams. Once again, no big surprise, J.J. was, of course, the director and writer of the third installment of the uh, Mission Impossible series, which I actually thought was the best one of the series so far. And J.J. is bringing along a couple of his alias writers to write the script. Um, does this surprise either of you at all? No, I think it's a risk. I mean, I think that audiences will... I think things are a little bit different now. I think that, that a bad movie will, will not survive even with a really big actor in it. So I don't know if actors have the pull that they used to have in that sense. Movie stars, a few of them do. But I think that if someone's really hated, mm -hmm. that that can pull down even a a good movie, and I think that that's a little bit what happened with, with the last Mission Impossible, and I think it's 
The question. Well, and the studio pointed specific. I remember some reps from the studio specifically. Summer, Summer pointed, Redstone was the one who he like shoot out Tom Cruise basically. And right, and, was, and they pointed to him with the War of the Worlds that the right? War of the Worlds did okay, but didn't do nearly as well as they thought it would. Right. They pointed Tom Cruise antics. Well, it did over four hundred million dollars, so yes. I don't think War of the Worlds could be. I mean, like we're saying, it did okay. It it did almost half a billion dollars. So I mean, yeah. but it's just right. It but I remember the, the studio ever. did project more. They thought. It oh would no, make they a lot did. More. Well, his. His whole PR campaign, his personal PR campaign with that film was a disaster. Yeah. But, yeah. you know. Yeah, it was. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, the question becomes, are people to, ready to love Tom Cruise again, you know? But it's I almost, think they are. It's almost less, are, are they ready to love him again or are they ready to stop hating him again? Yeah, you know I, what I, I mean? I think, no, I think you're right. But I got to say, I, I mean, because I was, and I've always been a big Tom Cruise fan, and I was very yeah. angry with a lot of the things he said. Because I, I mean, Jerry Maguire still, like, is one of my favorite movies ever. And I, I can watch He's Minority great. Report. He's great. And, and Collateral, I thought, was actually one of his best films. I love um, I thought I he should have been like nominated been for an Oscar for that. Mad. I, really I did too, actually. Yeah, I, he was I great thought it was in messed up that he, I, Collateral was amazing. I think he was even good in Lions for Lambs. I thought that was a, a very underrated and very good film. He was great um, in Magnolia. Yeah, no, he, he's yeah. a great actor, and, and I've always been a fan of his, and I was very upset with a lot of his comments during the whole World of the Worst thing, but yeah. I have to say, like, I'm kind of over it, and I don't know if it's necessarily that you know, people are ready to love him again, but I'm kind of like, at this point, I'm almost having a backlash to the backlash. So, yeah, I think so, it, too. <laughs> so if there can be, like, an Ethan Hunt revival, like, I mean, I thought the third film was good. I mean, I wish that they hadn't killed Felicity, spoiler alert, but, um, <laughs> you know, because cause I, I don't like to see Carrie Russell get killed, but... I love I mean, her, too. Yes, exactly, and that's how I came to love J.J. Abrams. But I mean, I yeah. think that that Tom Cruise is great in these films. He's he's certainly has the the physical the physicality to do it. And um, I mean, clearly, even if it didn't do as well as they were maybe hoping, I think that the Variety said. I mean, that the franchise has done 1.4 billion yeah, uh, at the box office. I mean, it's it's a huge franchise. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, Brad Gray was the one who came out and said, "Oh no, we're going to support it." Uh, you know, Sonar Redstone didn't comment. And I think that in this day and age, it kind of makes sense. It's like, hey, you know, we've got this big franchise. Yeah. And Might as well. well and and I, think, Roth, I think Roth is right saying that the question is, are people ready to move on from all the old Tom Cruise stuff? I think that is the question. But I also think th the answer is a definitive yes. And the reason is two words, Tropic Thunder. Tom yeah. Cruise <laughs> made the most brilliant, brilliant decision Mm -hmm. To come out and kind of make fun of him, well, not not literally make fun of himself, but but play this wacky, weird, crazy, and I'll tell you the best part of that movie, and when he did that and you know dancing like an idiot during the credits and all kind of stuff, the moment he did that, public perception and opinion of Tom Cruise changed overnight. I think it was a brilliant move. I think people are willing to move on from all the old stuff, and I think Mission Impossible Four is going to be a hit film. But listen, we've got. 45 seconds left here. So I'm gonna just skip our Saw 7 news and we'll go right to this question. And just, just quickly answer and tell me why. This weekend, opening in AMC theaters everywhere is Wolfman, Valentine's Day, and Percy Jackson. Now I'm gonna see them all, but if you had just enough money and just enough time to see only one of these films, and you gotta make this brief, you gotta make this quick. Christina, which one of the three films are you gonna go see this weekend? Wolfman. Roth? Wolfman. And me, close, close between Wolfman and Percy Jackson. I'm going to go with Percy Jackson. But listen, that's all the time we have uh, for today. Thank you so much for joining us and watching us here at amcentertainment.com on Script to Screen. Thank you. Roth, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good to talk to you guys. Christina, thank you for taking time out of your day for us here. Thank you. And thank you guys for watching us. Make sure you come back and check again. And for your daily hits of movie news, come to Script to Screen on amcentertainment.com. Until then, my name is John Cambio. <laughs>